Attention shoppers, tonight on The Checkout. Kirsten asks how fair Dinkum Australia's country of origin labelling rules are. Jules dives into consumer rights for services. And Craig goes after credit card companies. Ready or not, here I come. If you've watched the checkout before. Boring! I'm out of this place. You already know a bit about the Australian consumer law, so you know that it's your choice, not the stores, whether you get a refund or a replacement. <laughs> if something like that happens. But consumer rights aren't just about faulty goods. The consumer law also covers services. All clean, mate. Joe's cleaning, best of the business. I'm off. See you later, bye. When you pay someone for doing a job. <laughs> So, if a consumer gets dodgy services, what are my, I mean, your rights? To start with, service providers must use due skill. They've also got to take due care. Well, it was fixed. I gotta go. Services must also be fit for purpose. That is, they should do what they're meant to do. Well, that's me doing goodbye. And that includes any purpose or result that you've specified to the service provider. And I'd like my new doorbell to ring at less than 200 decibels, please. You got it. There are lots of ways you can specify what you want. The more clearly you tell them, the better protected you should be. And the best thing is to do it in a way that you can prove. Attention neighbours, you are here by witnesses that I want my lawn mowed to 2.35 centimetres in length exactly. Thank you very much for your attention. Good morning. A specified purpose doesn't have to be in writing. In fact, you can convey what you want without even saying a thing. It's a cat, right? It's a, it's a little tiny cat. See, hey, look, that's fine. There she goes. Good kitty. Oh, it didn't time travel. The flux capacitor's not working. Yeah, if it's unreasonable to rely on the service provider's skill or judgment, we're off the hook. Time travel, not possible. Yeah? Yeah. Speaking of time, if a contract fixes a time for performing a service, then under the consumer law, that time frame is guaranteed. 30 minutes and six seconds, that is free. But my flux capacitor broke! What? You forgot a couple of things. You forgot to say that if there's no time frame specified, then the service has to be carried out within a reasonable time. And you also forgot your garlic bread. Oh, thank you. OK, then. Thank you. Now I feel bad about spitting in the garlic bread. It's worth remembering this stuff because while most businesses give good service, others... ..will try to take advantage of you in the bad way. So remember, a contract can't remove your consumer rights in the fine print. Or even if it's not in the fine print. In fact, it's illegal to suggest that terms of service can override consumer guarantees. Or to suggest that you're going to pay for something which should be free under the consumer law. So if anyone tries that with you, it's garbage. There's a bunch of other useful protections in the consumer law too. Like it's illegal to be false or misleading about the need for services the quality of services, or the price of services. And that will be $100. Back inside to extra. Now, I know that's a lot of info to take in, but it is really worth knowing. So let's recap. Services must be fit for purpose. Done with due care and skill, within the specified time, or a reasonable time. Mm. And those guarantees can't be excluded. You got a problem with that? 
businesses also can't be false or misleading about services or about consumer rights. Would you believe you have to pay for that? No. Damn it! I'll fix that. But what happens when you get services that you're not happy with? In that case, the question to ask is, was it a major failure? And it's not always an easy one to answer. Yes, there are so many shades of grey. Oh, come on! Basically, it's a major failure if a reasonable consumer wouldn't have bought the services in the first place if they'd known what the problem was going to be. Or if the problem can't be fixed easily and within a reasonable time. Here's a few examples. This could be fixed pretty easily. But this is a... This wouldn't be too hard to remedy. But this would be a... This is easy to fix. But this would be a... If the problem with your service isn't a major... You have the right to demand that they fix it within a reasonable time. I demand that you fix this within a reasonable time! But there's no need to be rude. True. If they don't fix it within a reasonable time, you can pay somebody else to do it and the original supplier is liable for that cost. Or you can terminate the contract. If it's the other thing, then you don't have to get them to fix it. In either case, you're entitled to be compensated for any reasonably foreseeable loss. For example, the cost of a replacement car. And if you can terminate the contract, you're entitled to get all your money back. And by the way, it's not just tradies that come to your house who are covered either. Services includes things like internet access, but also professional advisors, <laughs> health service providers, and all manner of other services. But the consumer law service guarantees don't apply in all categories. For example, telecommunications, insurance, architects and even engineers in some cases aren't covered. Hello there. No. Different consumer protections apply to them, but the consumer law is generally the place to start. It really is worth knowing your rights and how to use them. Because if you do, there's a much better chance of ensuring that you don't get ripped off. off. Hey, isn't the ABC a service provider too, smartass? Nope. We're excluded. Johnson & Johnson Sorbeline. Baby Sorbeline. With 10% glycerin. Water, glycerin, petrolatum. And we can't be bothered reading the rest, but it's the same. $4.95 for 750 mils. For 500 mils? The reason this one's more expensive? The active ingredient is the word baby. Anaconda mountain bikes. Cool. I'm going to take it to a mountain and ride. Warning, not intended for off-road use. Oh. Anaconda, mountain bikes for roads. I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping claims, a faux Australiana and dodgy ochre names. There you go, Cobber. Every bonza digger in his jumbuck carries on like their ridgy dinkum these days. We got Aussie nappies. Aussie tissues. There's even dinky dye dunny paper for this wide brown land. And Struth, for a country born of imports. Speak for yourself, mate. We sure do like to buy local. <sighs> this latte sipper found that. Over 60% of consumers believe that buying Australian made products is important. At least we say so if some quiche eater asks us. Of course, different Aussies do it for different reasons. Better quality products. Supporting local farmers. There's no foreigners, eh? 
But what with all the Aussie flags and koalas and big dicks cutting about on Tucker these days, working out whether an Australian-made claim is true blue is bloody hard yakka. Take something like this oil. Oils! Is Moro olive oil made in Australia from local and imported ingredients, like it says on the can? Or is it one of Australia's prime imports from Spain, like it says on their website? Spain? I hate South Americans. And what's the difference between Master Foods 100% Aussie grown tomato sauce and Master Foods made in Australia tomato sauce? <laughs> and what about Sunraysia? It's 100% Australian owned, and until we got them on the dog and bone, their website said all its juices were bottled down under. But that doesn't mean its Australian certified organic juice is made from Aussie fruit. Take a close Captain Cook at the packet, and you'll see that it's made in the UAE. Is that anywhere near Bali? Maybe when they said bottled in Australia, they meant this Australia. Which makes the question in their ad... Hold on. Do you know where the fruit came from? A bloody ripper. When we asked Sunraysia, they narrowed it down to somewhere in the world. Fair suck of the juice pouch. And it's not just down the shops. There's plenty of mongrels playing silly buggers online. Take Battery's shop. They've got an Aussie website. They've got an Aussie address. They've even got a picture of their Aussie shop. Hang on. Sorry. I mean, they've even photoshopped a picture of a different store in Esperance WA to make it look like they've got an Aussie shop. When it's a furphy, they're really just flogging gear straight from Hong Kong. But don't worry, we dobbed those jolly swagmen into the ACCC. Stone the raw prawn, skip this whole malarkey's and dingoes <laughs> breakfast! <laughs> <laughs> when the Cobbers at Choice surveyed their members last year, they found... 12% of respondents correctly understood the meaning of made in Australia, 8% Australian grown, and 3% made in Australia from local and imported ingredients. These are the cards months to subscribe to a bloody consumer affairs mag. How are the rest of us battlers meant to cope? With the checkouts, Bond's a you butte guide to the really quite simple task of buying Australian. If an item claims it's Australian grown, it's supposed to mean just that. It grew here, it didn't flew here. If it bangs on about being a product of Australia, each key ingredient or part of the product originated here and almost all of the production processes happened right here. These two claims are as Australian as kangaroos and Holland cars. Well, kangaroos. Made in Australia, or Australian made, means the product's been substantially transformed here and that 50% or more of the cost of making it was incurred here. Whatever that means. But it doesn't mean the ingredients are Aussie. Bugger. So Australian made isn't as Aussie as we'd like to think. Like when a Kiwi wins an Oscar. Then there's lingo like made in Australia from local and imported ingredients. Unlike made in Australia, these ones don't have to be substantially transformed down under or spend 50% of their production costs here, which is why these bird's eye barramundi fish fillets, otherwise known as Asian sea bass from Vietnam covered in Australian breadcrumbs, can use it. It's really not part of Team Australia at all, just like the ABC. Companies can also pay to use the Australian-made logo. It's a certified trademark controlled by the federal government, which has heaps of spin-offs, sort of like underbelly. The Australian Grown and Product of Australia logos mean pretty much the same as the Australian Grown and Product of Australia claims, as does this fella, Australian Seafood. But the Australian Made logo is more dinky dye than the Made in Australia claim because it specifically excludes simple processes. So if this is all you've done and the key ingredients aren't true blue, sorry mate, there's no logo for you. And as for the rules about disclosing whether a company's Australian owned, there aren't any. You'll have to go Fossakin yourself. We'll take a squiz at the Ausbuy logo. It's got four categories for outfits that are at least 51% Australian owned. See? It's easier than stealing damper from a bilby. And it's not like this is a new drama, like Bernard Tomic or Coward Punching. Hawkey tried to sort it out in 1986 with the Australian Made campaign. By giving Australians a sense of national pride, in 1997, Trussy said he'd stop all the fart assing around with a genuine level of understanding of what is meant by country of origin labelling claims in this country. 
but they did sweet F.A. until 2011 when a ministerial review again recommended a more consumer-friendly labelling system and the galahs in government said... They were fretting over the considerable costs to food businesses in complying. Oi, what considerable costs? The cost of putting clearer information on the packaging. Flaming mongrels. Recently, police have been chinwagging about another blinky bill to sort out country of origin labelling. Origin? Get to the police! So it'll only be another ten years before nothing happens. In the meantime, you're on your Pat Malone. So if you care about Australian made, take a gander at the label, call consumer information lines if it's a bit iffy, and check out the Australian made website and the Ausbuy phone app for heaps more handy info. And by the way, if you see a product that pretends it comes from the lucky country and it turns out to be as flash as a rat with a gold tooth, that's against the law. And misleading or deceptive includes any pickies on the packet as well. So let's say someone made out like their famous Billy T was traditionally Australian since 1888, even though it was actually made by one of India's biggest companies in India, then do yourself a favour and dob those rat bags into the ACCC. Cos while some products will try to pull a Swifty by swanning around all tarted up in green and gold, there is one thing that's a hundred percent rigid did shearers sweat, kangaroos kicker, pikey's budgie at the back of Burke's backyard, Australian. And it's this absolute Barry Crocker of a system. Hi, I'm Dr. Sean Rintel, Chair of Digital Rights Group, Electronic Frontiers Australia. If I could say one thing, it's that if an online commercial service is free, you're not the customer, you're the product. Many online services make money from selling who you are and where you go to advertisers and third parties. When you're logged in, some services can track almost everything else you do online. When you like, share, or sometimes just access content, you can be tracked even if you're not logged in. If that bothers you, there's a few simple steps you can take. Install a browser extension like Disconnect to both visualise the amazing number of sites that are tracking you and better still, block them. Or a similar extension called Ghostery can also be installed on your smartphone. Look for HTTPS in your browser address bar. The S means secure and you can install a browser extension called HTTPS Everywhere to force sites to use a secure connection and block third party tracking. And don't use those convenient buttons to log into one service with the credentials of another. Separate service, separate login. It doesn't matter that you may have nothing to hide. It's that you should have a choice. Hey, Lynx! As a massive piss nut with a bastard hangover, I was epic stoked when I face landed on a shelf of anti hangover deodorant body spray. You bloody beauty! I totally needed something to blow away the cobwebs, leaving me ready to punch my day in the face instead of punching my face into a bus stop, which was my plan. And it bloody worked! If, by blow away the cobwebs, you mean all my mates who blew right away when I started smelling like a friggin' fruit basket! I don't know what the hell a fragrance pyramid is, but even a mad bastard like me can't face punch the day with grapefruit and musk and patchouli and freaking aldehydes! What does that even mean, you mad smelly scientist gobshites? I paid more than six bucks to anti my hard ass hangover, not to smell like a wanker in a candle shop. By the way, Lynx dicks, you also failed on another promise. The can told me this plus this equaled me turning into a sexy bikini babe, which I was totally looking forward to because YOLO! But at least there was one promise you actually delivered on. I felt heaps less irritated when I stopped using that shite! Thanks for sweet F.A. Pete. Hey, everybody. Who wants to play hide and seek? Yeah! Yeah, go on. 
Yeah! Well, that got rid of them. Now let's play an even harder game of hide and seek. Trying to find the key information on your credit card bill. When banks are trying to flog your credit cards, it's all about... Low interest. 55 days interest free. 0% on transferred balance. You'd think we're obsessed about not paying interest. But by the time you get your statement, things have changed. Take this Citibank statement. To avoid paying interest, you just pay this bit, the closing balance, by this date here, the minimum payment date. Here's another one. Don't pay this bit that's highlighted in the payment summary. Pay this bit right down here by this date back up here. It's clear as mud. What the credit card statements do emphasise is your minimum repayment. Everything about them suggests that this is what you should be paying. In actual fact, that's just an arbitrary number, about 2 to 2.5% of your bill, which leads you to pay the highest amount of interest that you can actually pay without getting a penalty. Kids today. Recently, a new law has required credit card bills to tell you just how much interest that is through what's called the minimum repayment warning. Found it gives... me! No, I didn't. It gives you an example of how much money you could save if you just paid more than the minimum repayment. And the difference can be huge. For instance, if I pay $116 per month instead of the minimum $61, I'll reduce my payments by $1,337 and reduce my term by 12 years. Can I come out now? No, I'm still looking. And here's the best bit. If you only pay your minimum repayment or anything less than the closing balance, then you'll no longer get that 55 days interest free. That's right, all of those interest-free days are only for those that pay off their closing balance every month. It'd be good if banks were a little bit clearer about how to avoid paying interest. And here we'll give some credit cards credit where credit is due for saying when credit is due. The NAB does tell its customers how to avoid paying interest, albeit in pretty small print. And other banks like the Commonwealth Bank also provide this info in a clear and accessible, if small, manner. Now, we haven't looked at all banks because some of them refuse to give us examples and some of my friends refuse to let me log into their bank details. Oh, come on, Craig, just give me your password. What could go wrong? <laughs> go figure. So have a look at yours and tell us where they sit. But even as some statements are getting clearer, we're using them less. If you bank online, you probably have to dig around a bit to find your payment information. <laughs> You might be able to sign up for an email or SMS reminder, but even these often focus on the minimum repayment. The Commonwealth Bank, for instance, does include the closing balance in their email version, but the SMS only includes the minimum payment. And neither of these require the legislated minimum repayment warning. So in the digital world, we've actually gone backwards a bit. So remember, the only way to avoid paying interest is to pay your closing balance every month. If you can't do that, every cent you pay above the minimum repayment is a good thing. Otherwise, in this game of hide and seek, it's the banks that win. Ready or not, here I come. Who does this bill get so high? Five, Eight. three, one, three. Welcome back to F YouTube, Australia's leading viewer feedback segment. First up, it's Claire, who was unhappy after buying a... Blue shirt for my son from Target. Claire found that the buttons on the shirt kept... Dropping off. In fact... Of the 19 buttons... On the shirt, 11 weren't sewn properly, which made Claire think... Target. That's not very good quality. Spot on, Claire. Remember, under the consumer law, if goods aren't fit for purpose and it's a... <laughs> you've got a right to a refund. And you don't need the original packaging or the receipt either, although you will have to prove the purchase. And your son could get the refund too, because under the consumer law, gift recipients have the same rights as purchases. Next up, an issue that really gets people riled up. I was extremely angry. The cost of parking. If ever there was an event that justified a detailed inquiry, this event is it. Yes, Minister, because the ABC has obtained video which appears to show that secure parking's promise of no parking worries isn't always true. Simone saw a sign at the Albert Street car park, Brisbane, that said, Early bird parking, pay only $25, in before 9.30 and out after 3. But when she went to the pay station later that day, Simone was charged... $72. And it's not just Simone. Victoria from 
Victoria, had the same issue with secure parking in Lonsdale Street, Melbourne. They were both caught out because they didn't validate their tickets on arrival in the morning. That's very deceptive. It didn't say anything about needing to validate the ticket while you were entering. Just rumour, innuendo and hearsay. Well, maybe, Minister. While Secure Parking's website says you can simply enter and exit the car park within the set times, there's a potentially expensive little devil in the detail. I'm very dissatisfied with the weasel words. Absolutely, Minister. Curiously, Secure Parking doesn't require any ticket validation for early birds at many car parks. I am absolutely sick to the stomach. They say they need ticket validation at some car parks because of capacity constraints. And when Simone complained by email, they gave her a voucher, though not her money back. So if you're an early bird, be wary, because some pretty tricky rules can turn early bird parking from cheap to steep. But as consumer FUs go, it's hard to beat Gordon, who decided to do his own F YouTube printer review. Today we'll be reviewing the Samsung Steel-X 3185 FN. Gordon's verdict on the multifunction colour printer was, well, pretty black and white. Now, if you think Gordon was being a bit harsh, on productreview.com.au, a majority of customers graded that Samsung printer as terrible. But you are right, Gordon was a bit harsh on the Samsung. Actually, a lot harsh. Now, to be fair to Samsung, when Choice reviewed multifunction printers late last year, a more recent model of the same kind of Samsung printer was one of the two top-rated colour lasers. And for a printer that only cost a few hundred bucks, we reckon Gordon and his mates got more than their money's worth. Well done, Gordon. And in case you're wondering, yes, Gordon does do other product reviews. In fact, he just got a new gig. Today, thanks to Mr Abbott, we're reviewing the ABC. <laughs> If you've got a customer gripe, then do tell us about it by making an F YouTube video or email us at tipoff at thecheckout.net.au. Please do get in touch. The more work you do, the less we have to. We're even asking viewers to make the promos for the checkout, just like... Jim from Queensland. Liz from Canberra. Dallin from the Sunshine Coast. Tom from New South Wales. You can DIY other parts of the show too, like this excellent homegrown product versus pack shot from Lila 2, which we'll end with tonight. Hopefully soon, we won't have to do any of the checkout ourselves. Good night.